Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. And we're back with another discussion talking about more weapons. This time the focus is the charge blade, the gun lance, and the bow. Of course, joined by 269 and Parallel Central. How are you guys doing? Hey, we're back. I'm doing great. Yeah. Back. Exactly, exactly. 26 <laughs> is the bow specialist, so of course he's going to be definitely very excited for that. I'm looking forward to Charge Blade, of course. I know, I know Paradise also dabbles in the Charge Blade ways and mm -hmm. the Boomstick. So if you guys are excited, let us know in the comments down below. Let me know which of the weapons so far are jumping out to you. If your weapon has not been shown yet, then uh, are you getting impatient? Either way, let us know and uh, keep you locked for any more Sunbreak stuff. But where do you guys want to start today? Who's going to pick the weapon? Of choice. Gun Lance, because I like starting with the weapons that I haven't looked too much into. So these weapon videos have like literally just dropped and we mm. are looking for all of the stuff. So some of us have taken different weapons. So explain to me the Gun Lance changes. I don't play too much of the Gun Lance, but oh, Hurricane okay. is always roasting me mm. for not playing the Gun Lance. The guy that I think looks sick for the character in uh, Sunbreak uses a Gun Lance. So <laughs> I'm looking at it, I'm like, it's looking kind of nice and running around on a rocket is always exciting this so is, i don't want to hype about these too much. i don't yeah. want to hype it up too much but i can tell you that that actually looks quite good <laughs> it is, cool. is it okay <laughs> the, thing, the, the difficulty is gun lance the, the damage on gun lance was always a little bit questionable but it was a lot of fun it's a lot of fun also just before like shout out to the armor that like amaldron's gone full mech this time around you must be loving that armor set 26 because like it's got a it's even got like a metro style Ooh, visor it's looking i see it cool. i see it yeah. i see it the weapon look cool the weapon look cool exactly uh, and the armor definitely looks like 10 out of 10 but hopefully right. the skills match up to the armor i know we have like layered armor and we could swap around but sometimes i feel like i'm cheating when i use the layered armor <laughs> and the actual skill set so. yeah true true but let me tell you about this let me tell you about this uh the, the bullet barrage so two new things silk by move is called bullet barrage so you know you know Normally, a gun lance, right? You have your charged shells, which you can just like, you know, stab and charge shells. You have your worm stake, and of course, you have the wyvern fire, right? So, this one here is described as you basically use a wire bug to dash forwards and you unleash everything with abandon. So, basically, before you perform this, it reloads your shells, it reloads your worm stake, it reloads your wyvern fire. It's basically getting everything reloaded because you unload everything. So like this oh, is just like megaton explosion. Bus. The full <laughs> bus, exactly, exactly. This is this is the complete unload. Now it's interesting because obviously it poses the questions. This consumes with a wyvern fire, which obviously is a normal thing that has quite a bit of a cooldown. So, say if you do this once and you don't want to go and do it again, I would assume it wouldn't necessarily just completely reset it. But yeah, basically this is just like maximal explosion. It's like I've got all these tools. We're gonna go full boom. That there's, sounds. There's awesome. a couple things though. Mm. It looks like if you already have everything reloaded, you just go straight into an immediate dash explosion, mm. which is which is nice. So you got a really, if you prep for it, you can have you can very quickly capitalize on a window. But I also think because you briefly said it there, Alex, it uses your silk bugs. So I feel like it it better refresh my my wyvern state cannon and my wyvern fire if I'm using a silk bug to do it twice in a row. If it mm. doesn't use more like if it uses two, then obviously you're not going to be able to use it twice in a row, right? So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting question because, of course, like, Wyvern Fire is, like, you know, it's, it's always been the thing in the gun lance. Like, it does quite a bit of damage, but obviously the trade-off is you have to wait for a little while. So you use it, you know, at an opportune moment, and then you kind of just go and cool down for a bit, wander around, do other stuff. You know, you've got plenty of other things to do damage, and then once it comes back, you can then cycle it. So, uh, yeah, it will definitely be interesting. Like, maybe maybe if it doesn't do a complete refresh, because it, there's a weird balancing thing there. Like, if it does refresh it, it could be a bit, like, cheesy but then having said that if it refreshes it and then consumes it specifically in that move it's not like you're refreshing it to use it yeah. outside of it so maybe it's self-contained maybe it works but i just like the i like the behavior because it obviously features a blast dash which is hella cool you just launch yourself towards the monster and just like explode everything so it's just like it's just maximal maximal it better boots. do massive damage like that, that's do. my thing if this thing does massive damage great if it doesn't I'm very much, I'm very disappointed if it doesn't. <laughs> Gun Lance will become the laughing stock of the community if it, if yep. it literally unloads everything and it's like, two damage. Not even just that. Imagine how many people are going to be missing oh, anyway. Like, so they're true. just going to be going straight past it and not even like hitting with it. So it's going to be hilarious. Like you just left that it is. with no cooldowns and you miss your target. It's going to be 10 out of 10. That is very true, very true. But we also have the switch skill. So this is an interesting one, like the way they described it. It's called erupting cannon. So they say this uh, this technique involves firing explosive or exploding stake into your target. Uh, and then when using the eruption cannon, the tip of the gun lance heats up and slashing attacks are enhanced for a short period of time. So it has 
a similar animation to the worm steak cannon, only of course instead of firing out like this worm steak, you seem to sort of have these like shorter bursts. It seems to be faster. Like the mm. gameplay, they showed off some things, but they didn't necessarily sort of show it in too great detail. So it's kind of hard to sort of infer exactly how this behaves. But by the looks of it, your whereas like sort normally sometimes you would have your worm steak combo and it ends you know once you fire it out. So it's quite like an abrupt finish. This one seems to like trade that basically for like quicker attacks potentially and of course like the booster slashing damage so maybe it tries to lean more into the lance component as opposed to the that's gun cool component. that's kind of like really mm. what i like about the gun lance kind of weirdly mm. i like the the combo and the like the cycling combo of the slashing attack so that being boosted they kind of as you're saying play right into the fact that you're that playstyle. so that's great like i like that mm. hopefully yeah what do you think of it in Paradise? Potential big DP I think it's a potential big DPS increase with both of yeah. these two new moves. Like one is literally a damage skill and a buff, and the other one is a potential big damage move because you unload everything. Mm, and that's what mm. the gun lance was pretty much missing, right? So I think that yeah. it, it's looking promising. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 100 percent Yeah, I think I think they've, they've given it like plenty of like super cool moves and like plenty of cool tech and stuff. So I just hope, yeah, I hope it actually the like delivers this time around because uh and obviously it'll be interesting to see as well because you have the different types of charge uh charge play the different types of uh, gun lances which obviously lean better into certain things like certain types of gun lances have better worm state damage or like better wyvern fire damage so you know maybe there'll be like a particular type that synergizes especially well with that like full unload so we'll have to we shall have to see let's move on to the the charge blade next then Ooh. tell me tell me about the charge blade who wants to talk me through these charge blade changes this is our special, but I can't take <laughs> this away from him. No worries, no worries. I, I, I'll give you a little rundown. So, so it's interesting, right? So again, it's one of those ones where they... It's got two new moves, obviously. They've shown off the Silkman one called Ready Stance. Now, this one looks definitely quite interesting, but it's also... Until you actually get to go hands-on, I feel like we, we can't necessarily know the full extent of the permutation for this one. But it says here, like, you have a Silkman maneuver that binds the sword together, basically. And after guarding, you have, like... The heavy knockback will leave you in sword mode and it will lower your guard reaction so you're able to chain sword attack. So the animation for this is the very same animation or very similar animation to when you load or store your files. Yeah. Uh, so you basically like slide the sword into the shield. But the difference here is that the animation seems to linger for a lot longer. So like normally you could do that. Like you can kind of go into that low stance and you can use that to, um, you know, kind of guard point from there. But it's normally quite quick. So this time around, like it seems to hold it for quite a bit of time. And obviously mm. from there, you're then basically like primed to either go into sword attack or you can do that sort of seamless one where you then draw straight into axe and spin around from there. So I want to know whether like you get like an additional sort of like bonus from there or whether this or whether it's just designed to be like a like a nice transition because it's strange like they it obviously shares the same slot as the uh, sort of counter before, mm. um, which, you know, when you do that counter, you get full files back. And without HUD, we can't necessarily tell what you're given from this. So um yeah i think there's definitely like a little bit of confusion as to quite the the full utility of this basically but it looks I'm, interesting i'm with you on that it's it's really weird because you already had this like really uh generous counter right like the window on the on the other the existing one in base rise mm. is quite generous now you have basically what i'm i'm pretty sure that counter cost two as well the original one yeah. So maybe this one is like a one cost. It doesn't quite. It's not quite as generous. It's not a full count that gives you all your files, but it's like a, an emergency button that you can use to use your silk bind to avoid an attack. But you already have guard points that you can like kind of do that almost similar thing to as well. That's what's confusing, right? Because it had a counter, mm. has guard points. Now it has another silk bind move that kind of guards and just lets you go into attacks. So yeah. I think you're right. If it doesn't give you some kind of buff, I'm a bit confused by that one too. How mm. much was the cost of the counter on the charge blade before in Rise? Was it two? Uh, two. I think yeah, it two. was two, yeah. So maybe this is like one and you can kind of soak some damage almost and mm. not get knocked back, but you can still go back in straight for an attack and you can use it a lot more like frequently. So maybe mm. that's where the use yeah. case for it is. It might be like almost like one of those ones where like when you went to this animation beforehand and if you didn't have like guard skills but you got hit by like a heavy attack, it would often like knock you back quite a bit. So it almost might be like a baked in guard stance to a degree, mm. which uh which could be quite interesting. But yeah, so it's it, yeah, i I like the I like the generous animation from it. It definitely looks like a safer way to play because a lot of the time if you didn't get your timing right, then you kinda get clapped and stuff. So it looks like quite a you know, like a user friendly style but we'll see we'll see but the the cool thing the cool thing is the switch skill there's a thing called file follow-up firing pin so this is described as a mechanism that lowers the pressure and elemental energy generated through shield thrust um and by sword attacks when in boost mode so i'm assuming when they say elemental energy they're sort of talking about like 
damage potentially, but what they what then happens is that the energy that you generate instead builds up on your target but disappears over time and it can then be detonated by the axe attack. So what you effectively do is when you have shield thrust and of course you've got charge, you know you put like file damage out and you know that if you charge your sword you also put file damage out on your hits. But instead that builds up on the enemy like like a sort of, uh, I guess kind of like putting like a worm stake in or putting like a, a stake into mm. them. Uh, so you see this sort of energy accumulating and then you switch to axe mode and it detonates, which actually sounds really cool because that obviously- That sounds awesome. It yeah. Sounds like, like little remote detonation and like build up and stuff. It's really, that sounds cool. Yeah, especially when you factor in that like, if you run this with like impact style and you like attack the head for a little bit, so you're building it up, then maybe the monster runs away and you then get up, get up close and like hit it with the axe. You're basically gonna get a destination which will all land on the head of the monster. Whereas if you factor in, say, some other moves, like you might land with one part of it, but maybe miss with another. So it could be like a really interesting way to just sort of like condense and focus that element, whether it be elemental or impact, on a location. 100%. That's, that's I, really think, I think it will also just benefit the general flow of the charge blade, which is that you're switching between these two anyway to juggle your files and to juggle your buffs on it. And it's just going to, at the very least, add like more passive damage into, into the switching between the two modes, basically. Yeah. 100%, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely very excited. I'm, I'm hoping that maybe, because again, like, it's the age old thing of like with charge blades, elemental charge blades never really quite, I mean, they, you know, they, they were a little bit more useful to a degree, maybe in Rise, but I still feel like elemental charge blades never quite get the time in the sun they deserve. So maybe like this could be useful because again, it might be like building up elemental damage on a location, especially if the monster's weak, it could be like really useful, but I do still see the best use case of this just being stacking impact on the head. And, you know, again, typical question of like, what happens if four charge blade users all try and do that? Is it gonna become some like nutty KO monster so uh yeah we'll have to we'll have to see but two six the bow the bow the bow so the bow the bow got some decent skills i wouldn't say that they're crazy but it doesn't look crazy on paper but i'm just happy that the bow got even more stuff so uh i'm always excited about the changes the first skill which is the switch skill is quite a simple one to actually understand and it swaps out for your melee attack and it's basically functions in the same way as a worm steak or like the skill that we we're just talking about for the uh the firing pin where was it the firing pin or was yeah. it the acting cannon where you kind of like you just put into the monster and essentially if you deal damage to that target then it will do additional damage which i think is a great way to kind of just increase the meta game of the bow giving the players a target to really aim at and make sure that they're getting additional damage on that just increasing the meta game and what you have to kind of really manage when it comes to uh doing your attacks Mm. Uh, I don't know what you guys think about that one where it's like you just little stake for us. You don't really use the melee on your bow anyway, mm. so you're not really losing, losing anything anyway. So, yeah. Well, I will say the, the extra damage after like the follow up extra damage is uh, or it says it's determined by the type of arrow as well. So I'm, I am wondering, like, so what type of arrow does it want us to use to get the most extra damage out mm. of it? Mm. Um, and also, yeah, I think it's cool. Like, you know, it gives you a sort of sometimes you're in melee range and this is something that would potentially be viable to do other than to just continue spamming arrows in melee range like it gives you an, an opening to do something that could potentially further increase your damage by doing the explosion uh, and following up on it do you think also maybe they put this in place to sort of because if you think about the flow for the bow like you're never normally super close as you say like sometimes you are yeah. but like there was always that move that sometimes people use it you know the retreat move where you would like dash backwards and if you crouch mm. it like speeds up your stamina i feel like you know sometimes people would use it but it wouldn't be like a a mainstay for a lot of people maybe this will also incentivize using that because you'll get up close and you'll stab then maybe you use that to get away so you're in optimal distance and then maybe uh so maybe like it all kind of works synergistically to sort of like bring back other moves that people aren't using but yeah i'm i'm keen to sort of see how um how it plays out and again like i want to sort of see what happens when you use like because you know aerial aim was like nuts on bow like what yeah. happens if you aerial aim on that location like ooh. yeah it's just increasing the bow's dps even further even though the bow was basically one of the crazy weapons in terms of dps anyway in the last two uh, two games so mm. it, it's going to be interesting it's another passive way to get additional damage if you're using your bow correctly so mm. i see this maybe being uh, a must pick for some dumb things depending on how the game pans out and yeah how the skills work definitely then the next skill is butcher's bind and this is a very cool looking one uh you basically shoot loose an arrow towards the target 
it binds with the target and you kind of got like a scorpion from Mortal Kombat rope or tether towards the target and if you do it again it will do additional what damage Alex? <laughs> Severing damage. <laughs> I got it wrong the first time guys. Just a little, little behind the scenes. I, I I, it was tired this morning all right. I recorded all these videos they dropped them and I read that as severe damage but I didn't just misread it. I assumed it was severe damage so I went off on a tangent explaining how this was a damage boost and I was like wait a minute. Well that no, 2-6 called me out. I was like actually you read it wrong. It's severing damage. <laughs> so it's not severe damage, guys. It might do severe damage, but it is specifically severing damage. I'm surprised that you went <laughs> that you made that mistake because in the trailer you see it it chopped the Anjanath tail off with it. <laughs> which was the for me was like, oh, I can do that with bow now. That's awesome. In my tired state, I was just like, well, maybe because the damage is so severe, his <laughs> tail came off. <laughs> So this yeah, move this, is really cool though. Yeah. It's like the it's like the dual blades one in base rise where you like stab the kunai and then yeah. do extra damage to that spot, which is which I remember when we first saw that for dual blades, we were like, well, this is you're gonna just be using this all the time. It's you, you stab it, you do more damage, it pops for even more damage. It's great. So I really like this, and we saw in the trailer as well. It it shares the like switch skill slot with aerial aim, so you can basically fire this switch skill aerial aim onto that point. Massive damage. It, it pops, knocks the tail off. Excellent. I really like mm. the look of it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I, th I think it's gonna be. Yeah, it's just like more stylish as well. I mean, like although you bow might not be the default weapon for cutting tails, I'm gonna be interested to see what happens if like uh, four bow users all just like fire this at the same time. Could this be the quickest tail cut in the lands? I feel like this is going to be very powerful for cutting tails because a lot of the time the hardest monsters to cut the tail on are like the higher ones and mm. stuff like that. So being able to kind of just aim at there and uh, take tails off in a way. And it's not like you're using like bow gun where you require like slicing ammo or something like that that doesn't necessarily replenish or your insect glaive and you have to jump up there. You can literally just throw this out and uh, kind of just shoot at that target. And if it does massive severing damage and is quick to cut off this hell this is going to be awesome mm, yeah 100 percent. yeah i'm uh very very excited to see this in action and they are uh, they're all looking very good they're all looking super super cool so there we have it little rundown on some more weapons of course we still got some more uh, yet to be revealed so very much looking forward to that what uh what are, i know obviously two six you're still waiting for them to show the long sword um paradise what are you uh what are you hoping to, to see next I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually really keen to see the long sword as well. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, uh, long sword. Okay. It was so cool in base rise. Like, it, I feel like obviously rise has kind of like taken a more of an anime turn with just the feel of the weapons and the flashiness of the silt by moves and stuff. So I, I am honestly excited for long sword as well. Mm, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that, that I think that is also one that I'm super looking forward to seeing. But there's uh, we still got the lance, the dual blades, and the light, light bow gun as well. So uh, yeah. Anyway, for the time being, that's it. If you guys missed some of the recent videos on the channel, be sure to check out one of these ones linked on screen. And do be sure to keep it locked because we're speaking about the other weapons as and when they drop. So uh, yeah, that's it for the time being. Catch you guys in the next one.